Welcome back to Stock Market Plenty. This is part two of that monthly chart. I just did part one. And what I'm telling you is that as people are triggered, they take the money off, they trigger that money back into the market. Once it's all in, just like when all the money was out down here, they buy up. When all the money is out here, they buy up. And when all the money is in up here, they take you down. When all the money is in up here, they take you down. When all the money is out, they take you down. The third leg, leg one, leg two. There's a third leg down in these markets, people. Now we're going, starting June 1st, 2010, is going into the second half of the year. 2011 is where I do know that third leg comes in for sure. And basically what I'm telling people is as you move up, you need to start selling. Don't worry about that. It goes a little bit higher. Understand that you're overbought already. And it's time to start ringing the cash register. Don't let greed get in your mind and stop you from protecting your assets. Because what happens is people keep going within their greed. Goes a little higher. Goes within their greed. And then, bam. Same thing over here. Greed gets put in at tops. Exuberance at tops. Down here, they had everyone that didn't want to be involved, and they walked it. Sorry, Wall Street has a way of doing business versus Main Street, which you are. Okay? And my job is to point out to all of my traders, new traders in the school, old traders, investors, you've been given a gift to even watch the video. And what I'm telling you is that keep this video and watch it going forward. We're going to put in a top, and we're going to have corrections in 2010 we'll be looking to see from six to ten percent on pullbacks uh, moving forward or a complete failure in the second half of the year or do they create the buy signal and exuberance is exuberance once it starts it's like a fever it can keep going higher and higher and higher as that exuberance is in play you keep selling into it if you're an investor or a buy and holder you better be doing what I tell you. Otherwise, you're going to regret it. Or if you let your greed get in the way, you're going to regret it there. Now, on a weekly chart, what they're doing on a weekly chart is tr that 200-week moving average is down, going downward. And in the school, we teach people about how to work with uh, weekly charts, weekly indicators, weekly moving averages, weekly mathematic moves, you name it. I'm going to show you how overbought we are on a weekly. But remember exuberance or an extreme is a phenomenal thing within itself I'm 93.68 percent overbought the neckline on the weekly chart is right here right below 1300 that resistance is a 200 week we're going in to uh, this is that weekly move that's parabolically gone up and people have chased performance Notice that the weekly bars, notice that the weekly part of the movement are very narrow range weekly bars. That means only a few people have been involved in walking this higher. And they're trying to suck your money in up toward the top so that you can live this part down. Go straight up, exuberance, straight down, gives it all up. Stimulus is here in 96. Stimulus is here at that bear market bottom, and stimulus is here at the systemic financial uh, event that occurred that's made this whole thing different than any other time in history. You may not believe it today, but here's what you will believe. When you come back and you take a look at our follow-up, this is 423. We can go higher. Yeah, more money could get sucked in, but what I want people to know is that on a weekly level, one, two, three, four, five, six of these weeks are very light weekly price advances in the S&P. And some of the earnings, which have been good, I'm not going to talk about the earnings in this tape. Go to stockmarketfunny.com, join a radio show on stock fundamentals and earnings, quarter after quarter. What I'm going to tell people is that 200 week is going to be resistance. If they get it above, we're overbought. We're going to be having a pullback. And extreme means that you can go to extremes all the way up to that top. It's possible if they can break that through there. There is another area of interest 
happens to be right here. It's called a pit stop. It's called the part of the bigger down move of the collapse right here that happened on 921. And at 12, 1250 is where we kind of got up there. That's that area. There's another area right here at the top of that same weekly bar at 1253.78. The higher we go, the higher overbought we get, the bigger the short that we're going to take and the bigger the top that we're going to get put in. There is little support below the market because all the short interest has come off the indexes. So when there is a correction down to support, the bounce or what's going to hold it at support won't be there and you'll fall through it. That's how you get the climactic side back down when it comes. This is the top that we called right here in January. It's on our website. We made over $100,000 shorting the S&P on that trade. We also made a lot of money on the way up. What I'm going to tell people is the good thing about it is leg three, wherever it is, you're going to have, just like you had here, leg one down. This leg was at a higher point than that there and straight down and you went lower. And you came all the way back. So all the manipulation, all the crime, all of the crap, everything, all the stimuluses, stimuluses don't work. Otherwise, you don't come back all the way here from where it started in 96. If it worked and it had sustainability, and if it was true, it's good for trading, it's good for short-term investing at times, but it's not good to hold because what happens is everyone got in there, everyone got in there, and down it went, and down it went, and in this leg, wherever it is, everyone's going to get in, and there's going to be another third leg to this market down, to this market down, a third, another third leg down. Leg one, two, there will be a third one. Okay, you've got your third leg up, leg one, leg two, this is leg three. Leg three will not be nearly as good to the upside of rewinding that tape as leg one over here and leg two was, but let me tell you about leg three. Leg three potentially is much worse going into 2011, 12, and 13, 14, and 15, where this leg is very small the third leg is very larger than this second leg down. That next leg when it comes to the downside will be greater than that one. Stay tuned over the rest of this year. Stay tuned into 2011 and 12. But more importantly, know when not to be the victim there and there. Know when to be the buyer and when to get out. Take advantage of the mechanics of Wall Street. If you're trained, and most people aren't, 99% don't know. You might think that you know, but why don't you really sit there and scratch your head and ask yourself right now, do you really know? Start there. Don't get triggered in at tops. Be sellers in to strength. We're too overbought. We're going to go a little higher, but we're so overbought that we have to have at least a 5 to 10% pullback when it comes. May, I see May as a month of May of 2010 as a pullback month versus a breakout month. It just depends the amount of exuberance and fund managers that chase the performance to put in the top. You've been given a gift on the S&P 500. Come back to stockmarketfunding.com. We have a lot more to share with you. Join our school, sign up. We've got many programs that you can benefit from.